Hey you guys, welcome back to another reaction. I'm Spartan. And I'm Pudgy. And we are watching the first episode of season five of Game of Thrones today. I can't believe that we're already on season five. That's crazy. Well, we're officially passing the halfway point at this stage. Yeah. And we're very excited because the events of season four were insane. It feels like the end of an era. We were saying it, I think, yeah. in the histories and lore that season one to four almost feels like the battle between the seven kingdoms and you know, the Targaryens and Westeros and everything going on with there. Now I feel like we're going into a second phase, which is really about what's beyond the wall and the war to come and, you know, just all these little things that have been teased along the way. That's the title of the episode, The Wars to Come. Is it? Yes. No. Maybe, maybe, you... maybe I wrote Game of Thrones. No. <laughs> maybe I wrote Game of Thrones. <laughs> you saw it, it was subconsciously no, in your head. I didn't see it because our mods had said to us, Avoid titles and thumbnails and everything because they start to get spoilery. So I was just like, it's a five episode one, click, eyes <laughs> closed, that was it. Yeah. That's right. Some people would call me the author of Game of Thrones, I wouldn't blame them. <laughs> what do you mean? You couldn't even handle The Butcher's Boy. I don't think you could have handled writing I could handle that. it. I just was not happy with myself writing that. It's different. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of The Butcher's Boy. Yes. Let's kick off. There's, so many, there's a lot of things to talk about. And we are also updating our love, like, hate list this episode. Yeah. So, Butcher's Boy, bittersweet. Yeah. Back then, I would have thought that I wanted that revenge more than anything, and yet I grew to really appreciate the Hound's character, mm. sympathize a little bit more with the struggles that led him to where he is today as the man that we know. But well, was. Yeah. And people brought up some good points in the comments. They didn't realize that the Hound was apparently injured because there's a line yeah. that Arya said that with his ER, he was moving a lot slower. So, that's yeah. probably partially why he lost to Bran because I was a bit surprised by that. You didn't remember that. I knew his ear was injured, but I didn't factor that in that to why he lost to Bran. Right. So, because, you know, I, I thought Bran's a good fighter, but the Hound's a King's Guard. He's a man. He's probably going to be a bit stronger than Bran, even though Bran's bigger than most of the men in the Westeros. Yeah. I expected him to have a higher chance of winning. Yeah. But my man, the Hound, it was kind of sad. It was done in a way that, you know, he just had to... It's almost like his life was just suffering. Yeah. From start to beginning. So. I know. How sad is that? Like... We just learned so much about him and what he went through as a child. And then that ending, like, it almost seems fitting for the life he has lived since being a child. But it's not really what he is deep down inside. So for us as viewers, I don't think that death was fitting for the person we knew him to be. But he was pretty much always in survival mode. Yeah. His philosophies around life. And, you know, right yeah. or wrong, we're just all about survival pretty much. Yeah. He learned, he learned real quick that it's like kill or be killed in, in his life. And isn't it funny and ironic how everything that the Hound taught Arya, she did to him, like took the silver or the know. gold or whatever I it was. I thought I would enjoy that a lot more when it came, but when it did come, I was kind of like, oh man, like yeah. he did in his own way. He, he protected her and looked after her and he got, he got her by when no one else would have. So yeah. I felt like she could have at least... Thanked him or something, you know, but... I get I get both. I do, I do. Yeah. I, I understand it. It was just, yeah, it was probably realistic, but it was just like a bittersweet kind of thing. Mm, well, know. now Stannis, which was awesome to see him come in across the wall. We just did not expect yeah. it. That was really cool. And He was like a badass and we epic. haven't seen him like that for a very long time. With that presence was cool, yeah. I, I'd say it's probably one of his best presence on screen yet that we've yeah. seen, especially after we saw him, you know, sort of a desiccated version of himself after he lost the King's Landing battle. Mm. And it seems like he's got Mance Raider now as his prisoner, as per John's suggestion. So that's pretty interesting. Like Mance Raider is this big king beyond the wall. So he's got a big army of himself, commands yeah. giants and, and everything. And Stannis has somehow got him captive at the moment. John is sort of in the middle of all this. That whole little story in the end yeah. is interesting. I want to see how that's going to unfold and what Stannis' game now. He's got soldiers from Bravos. Like, he's obviously got more power powerful army. The Night's Watch is in dire need. There's just all this, how, what's going to happen here? Yeah. Like, and oh. I want to know what that means for the wall now. Like, are they going to completely abandon it? Or are they going to hold the wall and Sanus going to lend them some men? Like, you just don't know, do you? Like, True. where you think Game of Thrones is going is never where it ends up. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just throwing stuff out there. But who knows? Probably none of them will land. Because the wall now is going to serve its original purpose, which was to keep... 
all the White Walkers and the supernatural stuff out. Not, yeah. not, not so much wildlings. the Wildlings, which was sort of like a just a secondary distraction. Yeah. And then speaking of like supernatural things, last episode we saw that Bran and Gang finally made it to the Three-Eyed Raven. And we don't really know much about him other than he can become whatever he wants, really. And he could seemingly see the lives of people being lived out because he's seen yeah he said he'd seen all their lives lived out and he sort of knew they were coming and so interesting well i didn't know if he was intertwined in the tree or if he was just like sitting there because it kind of looked like that tree kind of gave him life in yeah. a way but we met our first child of the forest which is interesting yeah we've heard about those in the history and law it's cool to finally see one i didn't think that we'd ever see one in game of thrones because they were sort of like a thousand years past kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, we didn't even know that they even still existed. Yeah, so that's interesting. It's just so much introduced. With Danny, yeah. we saw someone put it very interesting, which is she was the breaker of chains and yet she had to chain up her own children yeah, to keep damn. the people safe. That, that made me so emotional, that scene. It was quite a sad scene. It was quite really powerfully done. Like you felt like they were her children, not just dragons, you know, mm. in the pain that she sort of demonstrated. But... We were questioning her leadership and still sort of stands. I still got to, you know, the question's still valid. See where she grows. A lot of people shared their thoughts on that as well, which provides some interesting takes. I think that's one memorable moment for Danny's leadership, which is worth yeah. respecting that, okay, she put her babies, you know, chained them up because she realized they were harmed, even though we'd hurt her. Yeah. So that Two is- Two out of three. So yeah, so well, she can't find the third right now. So as a leader, that's showing some good progression from Danny. I agree. I, she is in a tough position and it's not like I'm talking down on her because if I was in that position, I can't imagine what I'd be doing. Like, it's so hard. So she is still learning and I'm allowing her to learn, you know? Like, I may not agree with all her decisions in the process, but that's how you learn, really. Yeah. And some people in the comments think that we're harsher on Danny, probably more towards me because she's female leader and they say you don't have the same standards but i don't reckon that's the case because i yeah. think there's a few things you got to consider firstly i'd actually argue that someone like john snow historically has been a lot more forgiving towards his enemies and generally not wanting to hurt people yeah where danny has been more i'll get the job done so my standards for john snow are going to be a lot more forgiving because he hasn't wanted to really kill a lot of people till very recently and even then if peace is an option or discussion is an option he okay, will factor that, that in pretty quickly right Secondly, a lot of the leaders that we talk about were introduced to this show from day one as some harsh ruler or a powerful person. I can only judge them based on their origins. Whereas we've seen Danny as a very innocent, loving person. Yeah. And so we grew to love that. And then we've seen the compassionate side of her. And now it's a fine line seeing her become a ruler and sometimes cruel or harsh. It's a fine line between the Danny we were introduced to and loved and the person she's becoming. And you sort of don't want to lose either or. So that's we where a lot of the discussion comes from. And yes, like we see her be harsh, but I think the part that actually makes us question it is that it doesn't always go her way in terms of like there are consequences and she doesn't always get the positive outcome. So we see her fail and fail and fail and we're like, we know what's worked for you before, that compassionate side. And and it doesn't always work, right? Because she has gotten stepped all over yeah, behaving yeah, yeah. in that way too. It's a fine line on both ends. Yeah. I mean, you got Tywin, right? Right off or wrong, good or bad, brutal or nice, he's a proven battle commander. He has won time and time again. Yeah. He has conquered. Danny's up and coming. So when yeah. you're up and coming, you are going to be critical and we are going to be critical of the mistakes that she makes especially if an advisor or somebody had warned her otherwise and she sort of dismissed them. It's like you haven't really got into the position. You don't have the years behind you to be dismissing people the way someone like Tywin can, who's proven time and time again he can do that. So yeah. so it's nothing to do with like gender or anything, but yeah. But speaking of big mistakes, our boy Tywin has been making mistakes since the day Tyrion was born, really. <laughs> Since the day he was born. Well, as a father, Don't mess yeah. with my man. Did not expect that at the end of the season. That was crazy. Tywin, so much success. It's almost poetic in a way because his enemy, Rob, went out, you know, sort of un like in a shit way and yeah. then so did Tywin. There's no, imagine yeah. the amount of success and then you go out 
on the shitter by your own son. Mm. Like that is like the, the, the least glorious way someone like Tyrone could have gone out. And someone said, someone wrote a comment on Patreon and they were saying that Littlefinger kind of foreshadowed Shay and Tywin's death mm. by saying, you know, some people die in their beds. Some people die. I can't remember the word that he used, but essentially on the toilet. Yeah. Um, When he was talking to Liza's little boy. Yeah. Ro- uh, yeah. Rob? What's his name? Robin. So it's not worth remembering. <laughs> so that was actually quite interesting because obviously there's no way he could have predicted that. But it's just interesting that even if it's not planned by Littlefinger, it's always perceived to be planned by Littlefinger in some way. Yeah. So Varys as well at the end seemingly ran away with Tyrion once yeah. he realised that somebody of importance was killed. Yeah. With the ring of the bell. He knew it was Tywin. Yeah, I, I guess you could assume it was yeah. one of the, one of two people. And it was really interesting just how quick Varys could think on his feet. He made such a big decision leaving an entire thing I behind. I know, I know. I've been, always been fascinated with his character. Like mm. he sort of plays in the shadows, but he's not as ambitious or clear cut as Littlefinger in what he wants. He just serves the realm. Yeah. And he does sort of whatever that needs to be. So right now it's going to be interesting. Him and Littlefinger, sorry, him and Tyrion together. I wonder what adventure awaits them. That's kind of cool. Oh, I like their friendship. So it will be interesting to see how that plays out on the other side of the world mm. for them. Arya is on her way to Bravos. Yeah. Will she meet our friend Jack and Hagar or Jack and Hacker? And Tyrion and hopefully Barrett. Like I just, oh, you think Tyrion's going to Bravos too? Well, I don't. I know he's going to. <clears throat> I know he's going to Essos, but who knows where? Interesting. Imagine he ran into Danny. How random would that be? <laughs> oh my god! I can't wait for this season. I genuinely. I just can't feel like wait. this season is going to be so different. I just want to see where Jorah is right now because. He's left Danny, and I can't imagine him going back to King's Landing, but I don't know. Where else is there for him to go? We were saying we can imagine him running into Jon Snow yeah. and joining the Night's Watch, which would kind of make sense because his father served there. It's technically where he should have gone initially for yeah. his dishonorable behavior. He might go back to like go visit his father, but... Yeah, and then see Jon Snow's got the sword, and then remember oh, that. Oh, yeah, because in the histories and lore, Jorah was saying that he actually left the sword behind because he didn't feel he was worthy. Yeah. And he wanted his father to give it to someone who was worthy of that sword. So that'd be a really sweet moment, I think. See, all you history and law haters, it helps our knowledge big time. <laughs> How cool. Imagine he's joined Nice Watch. He's fighting with John. Then at some point, everyone unites for the big battle against the White Walkers. Danny brings her armies. She looks to the left, sees Jorah, nods and smiles in approval. Jorah <laughs> smiles back. And they charge in, you know? Imagine that. I've got like a scenario because he's in a nice watch now, but it's kind of like we've moved past these things. That's kind of the... Uh, uh, look, probably won't happen, but it was a nice yeah, vision in my Spartans head. Yeah, called a happy ending and they don't happen. No, no, no. They might all go into battle and all die. <laughs> I'm just saying before that happens. That wasn't the ending. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, the final point, which I found was interesting and kind of picked up again on the Histories and Law video, was that... <laughs> Now that Tywin's dead, he was kind of in charge of all the Lannister funds. and More the huge debts. <laughs> well, yeah, the debts. Because now their mines have run out of gold. They've just gone dry. And so they're going to be in trouble with the Iron Bank soon, for sure. Like, as soon as they find out. And what gets me excited is when we say they, we mean Cersei. Because yeah. we're assuming she's what's left since Jamie's a Kingsguard. Yeah. Which I honestly... I'm anticipating the downfall of Lannisters at this point because yeah. with Tywin gone, like Cersei had no idea that they were already holding on by a thread mm. and they were depending on the Tyrells and with all this shit going on, I reckon the Tyrells are going to sense their weakness and pull out or something. Who knows? But the Lannisters, I anticipate, are going to have to go downhill and I'm, I'm, I'm here for it, man. Mm. Well, because we saw how brutal the Iron Bank was, so you're like hoping that that happens to Cersei. Maybe they just come and yeah. spring Cersei up and just start actually annihilating her. But... I do think the Tyrells want the power at the moment Tommen's king. So either Marjorie's going to marry Tommen or Cersei's going to have to suck it up and marry Loras. Who knows? It's funny that the, the, the title of king doesn't feel nearly as powerful with Tommen gone. Yeah. I just feel like Cersei's the only one left other than Tommen and that feels like such a fragile scenario. Yeah. You know, like it doesn't feel like a strong leadership. Littlefinger's sort of in his own realm. Varys is gone. 
what's you just going to refer to buy sell like it's just it's not Ugh. i don't see it lasting very long we'll have to see okay we've talked our asses off <laughs> now we'll update our love like hate lists and then we will get into the episodes i'm very excited to watch all right do you want to kick us off all right, so just a disclaimer, just for those of you who don't know, we write down our answers and we do not discuss this beforehand. So we're finding out each other's list at the same time that you guys are. So my love list, there was one change to it. Tyrion, Jamie, and Jon Snow. Yep, makes sense. Mine is Tyrion, Jamie, and Jon Snow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so my like list is Danny, Arya, and Littlefinger. But if I had a fourth, I, what's the Mace's name? I don't really remember, but I Kyburn or something. Yeah. I think I started to like him already and just his philosophies, but when we watched the histories and lore, I liked his viewpoint a lot more. So if I had a fourth, he's slowly creeping up there. Interestingly enough, you don't have a fourth, so we could have just skipped that. <laughs> My like list is Littlefinger, because mm -hmm. he's been just quite intriguing. I've got to respect the, the craftiness of his character. Yeah. Danny has gone up there. Okay. She's been quite interesting lately. Things building up. And Stannis had to be put back up there, okay. because after that entrance suit, I was like, all right. And, and keep in mind, at least some more like fashion trends. They change season by season, depending yeah. on what's trending in the show. It's pretty much all you can do. Yeah. And a lot of people die. So I've had to replace oh. dead people who would still yeah. be on there. But I agree with Stannis. Hate list. The infamous hate list. Cersei, Ramsay, that hasn't changed. And an opening became available for Sneaky Snake Pycelle to be added back on the list. Ooh, okay. Okay, interesting. For mine, it'd be Littlefinger. Wait, no, that's like... <laughs> That's that's the old one. Never mind, never mind. It's the old one. My bad. <laughs> I read from the last week. How did you like him? In I mean, you can. You can like it. No, I've but... got Ramsey. Yeah. Bray remains on there because this just still pissed me off from, yeah. from the Red Bro. Wedding. Yeah. And I have added the mountain just because okay. it seems like a savage of a man. Like what he done to... The way he killed my man Oberon already is just disgusting. Let alone that there seems to be nothing good about the man other than he's just a brutal person. The Hound... He's like an angel compared to his brother, the mountain. The mountain yeah. is like the worst of the worst. So, yeah, from, from that, he's definitely made the list. Now, I want to start with honorable mentions because you hog this lifetime. Okay, yeah. Honorable mentions, people who have died who we just want to put a shout out to that we will miss. For me... It's a lot of people this season, isn't it? It's a lot, but I haven't done all of them because I know there's some that just didn't hit me as much. Okay. For me personally, Gren, I really loved his loyalty. Yeah. Oberon, I mean... Great character. Wish we got so Aww. much more from him. Such a good character. Tywin, you know, very interesting. Great actor. I think Charles Dance is the is the actor. He was brilliant in that role. Sad to see him go. And the Hound. I was sad to see yeah. him go too. So those are my honorable mentions. Yeah. So mine's a little bit longer than that. Well, do you include all those? To save us time. You just like. Yeah. So Oberyn the Hound, Gren is there. I've got Tywin. You know. Whatever. Um, Igret. Oh, I was so sad when I saw that. Pip. I, I mean, if you asked me a season ago, Shay would have been on there, but not so much anymore, yeah, really. So yeah, for the tip. Yeah. Guys, we appreciate all the love and support over on our Patreon. If you do want to support us over there, as well as get early access to upcoming reactions and uncut reactions, check out the link in the description. I'm not really doing this because Pudgy's got the giggles again, so we proceed. For everyone over on YouTube, if you enjoyed today's reaction, leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and let us know in the comments down below what you thought of this episode. <laughs> I'll be here recording all day, guys. I'll wait for her to stop giggling. We're just going to go ahead. I don't know why I'm crying. I, I messed up one word in my original take, and apparently that's enough to set Pudgy off. <laughs> Okay. All right. Season five. Let's go. Let's go. Excited to start this. Oh, we're going to see Winterfell. Maybe it's like rebuilt because I didn't see any smoke. Who True. knows? Interesting. I don't know. Or maybe I just missed it. Pentos. Oh, He's going to be in Pentos, Tyrion. Right. Have we seen Pentos before? No. No, but Pentos is where 
Shay was from, I'm pretty sure. No way, dude. Wow. Marine as well. Damn, we're going everywhere this episode, apparently. Are they all for this episode? Yeah. Oh, damn. We shouldn't be out here alone. Why not? If your father here... He'll never know we're gone. That's Cersei. You reckon? 100%. Oh, like a backstory, maybe. That's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> I'm already excited. I could just tell by the demeanor. Get out. Oh, she's Get not out. dead. Oh, is that Osha? No. I know you're a witch and you can see the future. Okay. I think I just know that actress. Tell me my Ugh. future or I'll have your two boring eyes gouged out of your head. She's been sick since young. If it is, Cersei. Three questions you get. You unlike the answers. Oh, if it's Cersei, I have the terrible answers. You'll never wed the prince. It is Cersei, you're, you're right. But I will be queen. Oh, yes. Oh, God. I want to know her other two questions now. Younger. More beautiful. To cast you down and take all you hold dear. Oh, shit. The king will have 20 children. Oh, yeah, all the bastards. God. What the hell? Damn. You wasted your damn questions, girl. I don't think she had a choice in them. She just like, answers them. You reap what you sow. Is this their wedding, maybe? Or funeral. I thought it was going to be the funeral oh, for Tywin. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> oh, there's a younger, more beautiful version. I want a moment alone with him. What, so you can have sex with Jamie again on top of his body? Oh, that I can never get used the to that. The eyes creeping me out, yeah. Oh, there's Jamie. <laughs> I've been telling you for years, you've been defending him for this years. This is exactly what they want. Then, Don't lose faith in Tyrion, Jamie. Tyrion may be a monster, but at least he killed our father on purpose. You killed him by mistake. Dude, Cersei. Cersei, get out of here, man. You're a man of action, aren't you? When it occurs to you to do something, you do it. Never mind the consequences. Oh, it says you. Look at the consequences. I want to slap her. Jamie, speak up. Say something, Jamie. I don't think he can hear you. <laughs> Damn, look at the pain on his face. How feel, dare she blame that on him? Oh, I like the beard, Tyrion. I still don't see why I had to stay at this fucking crate once we yeah, that's, sail. That's a good point. If they catch you, they catch me. Yeah. I cannot say I feel overly guilty about leaving you in that fucking crate. Oh. <laughs> we tried to do what was best for the realm by supporting a Targaryen restoration. Things have gotten worse, not better. So Varys was sort of plotting to restore Targaryens in the beginning. You already drank yourself across the narrow sea. In a box. Why stop now? Because we are talking oh. about the future of our country. The future is shit. Oh. oh. Damn. Not like the Tyrion who was once hand. I know. He had a bit of optimism, a bit of hope. Oh. 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 You gross to pull more. Ew. This is Marine. They're tearing it down. Shit. How did they even get up there, dude? Damn. Who's that? Seems like a jacked version of Grey Worm. Grey Worm, yeah. He looks like Unsullied, but then he's having... He is Unsullied. But then how is he having potentially sex? Damn, man, he's jacked. So he didn't want her to take his pants off. For obvious reasons. Oh, more like a mother or something. Oh, that's fascinating. It's a different kind of pleasure for the... Never having felt the warmth and love of nurturing, you know? Yeah. 
even like being next to the breast, I think it's almost like, you know, being close to your mother's breast for breastfeeding and stuff. Yeah. That's pretty cool, actually. <gasps> what? That was such a warm scene. What? Oh my god, dude. Far out, dude. This show has no chill. What was the name of the man you lost? Quite right, Your Grace. Damn, dude. Man was a beast. I feel bad for him too. He was just getting some love, you know? Angry snakes lash out. Makes chopping off their heads that much easier. Oh, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to speak with you. Oh, just to look, everyone <laughs> leaves. Grey Worm, the commander, I'll write it. I have heard that more than one Unsullied has been known to visit Marine's brothels. I know, but this guy wasn't doing what you think he was. Why would an Unsullied go to a brothel? Oh, there's like tears in his eyes, almost. Probably hurts him dearly, it's like a brother that's gone, you know. I think it's more than that, though. Maybe he does know. Get your shield up. Too heavy. If it wasn't heavy, it wouldn't stop a sword. Now, get it up. <laughs> <laughs> Go, John. Now they're letting him train people. Hopefully. Surely he's been promoted. Drive at me. Keep your shield up. Or I'll ring your head like a bell. Can <laughs> <laughs> you be training too? Well, I'm hardly a new recruit. <laughs> <laughs> How many brothers can say that they've killed a white walker and a then? True. <laughs> the king wants a word. Oh no. <laughs> Stannis is still there. This is interesting. Oh, it's been a good chat. John and uh, Stannis. Stannis. The Manis. Please don't fall for her too. He won't. My boy John ain't no simp. Are you a virgin? <sighs> what a question. No. Good. Oh, Melisandra. You know who rules at Winterfell now? Who's Bolton? Mm. The traitor who plunged a dagger in Rob Stark's heart. Oh, let's go. Some of the Night's Watch feel you have too much affection for the wildlings. They were born on the wrong side of the wall. It doesn't make them monsters. True. I like that. Go, John. Tywin Lannister is dead. He can't protect them now. I shall mount Roose Bolton's head. On a spike. Yes, 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 yes. The men of the Night's Watch are sworn to play no part. I'm talking about the damned Night's Watch. I'm talking about the wildlings. Oh, he's prepared to work together. Well, for his cause. Hey, that works for the wildlings too. They get the right side of the wall. They swear to follow me, I'll pardon them. We'll take Winterfell. Oh, dude, that'll be sick. Oh, wow. I'll offer them their lives and their freedom. If man kneels before me and swears his loyalty. I don't think that's likely. He doesn't kneel, remember? Yeah. Convince him to bend the knee. Christ. Or he burns. Jeez. Burns? How much time do I have? Nightfall. Sun drops fast this time of year. Hurry, Jon Snow. Oh my Man, god. If they fight for him, he should just, he should just take the win. Stannis. He's worried about a knee bend. It's more than that, but yeah. Found Arya. She didn't want my protection. Signs are still mine. Will you shut your mouth? He's just trying to help. All I ever wanted was to fight for a lord I believed in. The good lords are dead and the rest are the monsters. I mean, oh. I get it. You told Lord Royce we were going to the... Nah. What the hell? No freaking way. Do you trust all those knights and ladies, stable boys and serving girls? No. Do you trust the carriage driver or the knights escorting us? No. <laughs> Damn, Sans has really changed. Brienne's Your right there. So far from here. Even Cersei Lannister can't get her hands on you. Does that mean they're going to go to the east as well? Or like... Who knows? Is everyone heading down that way? Damn. Your father was a... A force to be reckoned with. <laughs> so he's not buying any of it. But just being in his presence was enough to make it so clear. <laughs> just 
Uh, deepest condolences, Your Grace. Ugh. Tragedy. I never trusted Varys. Oh, shut up, Pysel. Your Grace. Who's this? Cousin Lancel. I hardly recognise <gasps> you. What the hell? I think it's a different person, but... The hell? Lancel changed heaps. So he's a sparrow? Some sort of religious following, yeah. That was random. Probably needed religion after what Cersei was doing to him. <laughs> now she's truly alone. And a lot of it is her doing. All of it is her doing. <laughs> well, I mean. You can forgive me. What could you possibly have done to warrant my forgiveness? Oh, no. I tempted you into our unnatural relations. I think it was all the way around. There was the king, his boar hunt. Oh, we finally get the truth. I don't know what you're talking about. Are you sure? Yeah. Remember what they, the hell? They so gave him think, strong wine. Yeah, but do you think he did it so he could be with Cersei? He's just following Cersei's words, I think. But his pardon is what he's ashamed of. Well, does Cersei know that that's what happened? Yeah, she was yeah. the one that she was always trying to sabotage Robert. You think I want that woman married to my brother? If she doesn't marry me, she doesn't go to Highgarden. True. Which means you're trapped here with Cersei Lannister as your mother by law. Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's got the plan. She's lit from her letter. <laughs> Eunuch, a spider, a master of whispers. Imp, half man. <laughs> I love that. You never told me why you set me free. Your brother asked me to. It's more than that, though. I didn't do it for you. I did it for the Seven Kingdoms. Okay. I believe men of talent have a part to play in the war to come. Varus with a good take, as always. Come. Any fool with a bit of luck can find himself born into power. Yeah, true. But earning it for yourself, that takes work. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for Tyrion's arc. I killed my lover with my bare hands. I shot my own father with a crossbow. Let's be fair, you went through so much, Tyrion. What is it you want exactly? A land where the powerful do not prey on the powerless. Where the castles are made of gingerbread and the moats are filled with blackberry wine. <laughs> Aww. He's so cynical now. Perhaps we've grown so used to horror, we assume there's no other way. Yeah, nice words by Varys. I will never sit on the Iron Throne. No, you won't. Okay. But you could help another climb those steps and take that seat. Who? Oh, interesting. Danny? Or John. I know you can't because he's a nice watch, but John's like the perfect in between. Who said anything about him? I knew it. Oh, so he means he's talking about Danny. Or you can ride with me to Marine, meet Daenerys Targaryen, and decide if the world is worth fighting for. Oh, Damn, dude. my Tyrion goodness. and Danny, that'd be cool. I drink myself to death on the road to Marine. <laughs> That'll be a cool interaction, dude. Oh, this is going to be epic. I cannot he might, wait. He might replace Jorah temporarily as an advisor. Potentially. Who would have thought he'd be fighting for the Targaryen? I know. Politics is the art of compromise, Your Grace. I'm not a politician. I'm a queen. <laughs> they ask for the reopening of the fighting pits. Oh, my God. Where slaves fought slaves to the death. The pit fighters you liberated plead for this opportunity. Don't get distracted, Danny. Opening them would show the people of Yunkai and Meereen that you respect their traditions. I do not respect the tradition of human cockfighting. If you could How many times must Damn. I say no before you understand? This is where she's a little bit unsympathetic. You were sold into slavery, forced to fight to the death for the amusement of the masters and you're defending the fighting pits. <laughs> I know it's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? It's not so black and white. I learned to fight like a Dothraki screamer, a Norvoshi priest, a Westerosi knight. Soon I was famous. 10,000 men and women screamed my name when I stepped into the pit. I made so much money for my master. He set me free when he died. Okay, that's a bit of his history. Yeah. He knows people, that a well -er, so Yeah. Good. But it's funny, so many people find so much out of the misery. 
and build a life from it. Anyone with a chest full of gold can buy an army of Unsullied. Mm. You're not the mother of Unsullied. It's a good point. You're the mother of dragons. And she had to lock them up as well, so... I don't want another child's bones dropped at my feet. Yeah. A dragon queen with no dragons? It's not a queen. Damn. Okay. Tell her how it is. Interesting. She's learned that she's becoming vulnerable in front of him. Yeah, I don't know how much I really like that though, you know. He has given her good advice so far, to be fair. Yeah. She's going to have to learn how to control the dragons, bond with them. Yeah, a bit more of what we've seen in House of the Dragon. Yeah. Which she probably has not had no one teach her that it's possible. Yeah, everyone that she's come across didn't even believe in dragons, really. Was it Jorah that gave her the eggs? Or it was someone else? I don't remember. I think her brother already had the eggs. Jorah stopped her brother from stealing it. Mm. It was already in their possession. No, someone gifted it to her for her wedding. Okay. Viserion? Rhaegal? Oh, they're angry. Wow, that's what I expected. And they're, they're growing a bit, I think. They're not happy. Damn, she's scared of them now. Oh, shit. She's lost her confidence. For sure you'd be scared of that. You don't know if they're going to rip your head off or not. So here we are. Here we are. Here we are. This doesn't have to be our last meeting. No, but it will be. Damn, he's not going to change his way. He told me you weren't here to conquer. He told me your people have bled enough. That's right. I don't want them bleeding for Stannis Baratheon either. Yeah, I get that. I like Mance. I respect him a lot for that. Isn't their survival more important than your pride? Pride? Oh. This isn't about that. What's it all about? He's an intriguing man. They followed me because they respected me. Because they believed in me. The moment I kneel for a southern king, that's all gone. Yeah, okay. How many women? How many children? And you won't go out and rescue them because why? You're afraid of looking afraid. Oh, John. No shame in that. Right. Even Mance's responses are gold. How will they do it? Beheading? Oh, they're going to burn you alive. They'll burn you alive. Oh, look at that twitch in his eye. Yeah. Damn. He's honestly being afraid. He'd rather burn than Neil, the great hero. <laughs> Until winter comes. And the White Walkers come for us all. And there's no one left to sing. And then what? Yeah. Come on, John. Convince him. I don't John want man to die. Him. But if you can't understand why I won't enlist my people in a foreign his war, there's no point explaining. Damn it, man. I don't want to lose Mads. Not yet. I don't want to see them all burning alive either. I think you're making a terrible mistake. The freedom to make my own mistakes was all I ever wanted. Oh, I get that. Yeah, I do. I respect him a lot, man. King's Nightwatch, they're all just... Bogged down by rules, but he's thinking about it and he does have the freedom to make his own decision. So how's this going to end? I think he's going to give them the option. Maybe. We'll find out. Damn, I feel so bad for him. He's walking to his death. Oh my God. And a slow one at that. Bend the knee, I promise you mercy. I know it, I know it's coming. Kneel and live. Come on, please, dude. I wish you good fortune in the wars to come. <laughs> oh, man. No. No. Such a waste, dude. It's not happening. 
Someone intervene, please. I can't watch this. I can't watch him burn alive. Oh, Damn, the suspense dude. is killing me. No, 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 no. Someone do something, man. It's too predictable. Something happened. John will. John will. Come on. Or torment. Here stands your king of lies. Behold the fate of those who choose the darkness. No, man. It's happening too slowly. Something will happen. Don't give me hope, man. Don't give me hope. Come on, come on, come on. Please, man. Please. Come on, come on. Come on, John. Say something. He's getting scared. But can they let him off? Holy shit, dude. The suspense is killing me. No. Oh, John. Oh my god, this is horrible to watch, dude. Oh, oh yeah. get your smile away. Come on, Tommen, come on. Oh, John, John ended it. Oh. I respect that, man. Even though it's sad, I respect that. Oh, John. Oh. Holy shit. Man, that was painful. What a sad... Sad loss. It's uh, Game of Thrones really just. He actually stood for something good, man. It's always the guys. You know what kills me? This show is the guys that stand for something good and noble get horrible deaths, and the guys that stood for something noble or more on the side of you know evil just get quick get quick deaths. Like, heck, I don't see Joffrey burning at the stake, shivering and stuff. I know. I mean. He his was a little prolonged, like it was strangling him for a while, but it wasn't long enough for our satisfaction, was it? Oh, I respect John. He went over the king's head and just killed him. Like, cause that's obviously not Sanus's way or Melisandre's way. But technically he's still burning to death. So I think it was, it was like a gray area, it was okay. Yeah, but maybe. yeah, I, I, I love John for that. I was secretly hoping that he had some sort of, pull some string and some water thing floods over. Oh, I thought someone was going to jump in there or he was going to be like, all right, stop, I'll kneel. Like, I don't Damn know. Damn it, man. Damn it. I like how they actually, really realistic, the fact that he showed his fear, that he was afraid, but he didn't run from fear. He embraced it, you know. Yeah. I, I, I do respect man so much. Again, such a shame, man. This show really pulls at my strings because another great character and as soon as you start to get intrigued by him oh, no. he's gone like I would have loved to see him for a season at least we didn't see much of man it was maybe like a, a couple episodes worth and yeah. like only snippets of that just started to respect him now at the very end god damn it spewing such a respect to his name man so much respect to man so I'm adding him to the honorable mentions list even though it's after episode one because it's just brilliant. Brilliant guy. I like his philosophy. I like his words. Everything about freedom, the freedom to make mistakes. Yeah. I love that. You know, we could do a lot more more of that kind of mentality even in today's society. So it was just brilliant, that mentality. And he went out like a boss. Well, I wonder what the rest of the wildlings will do. Like, will they even get a choice? I just can't imagine them killing all the wildlings. Like, Well, the majority of them are over the wall. So it's whether he can find a someone who will round them up enough to... Follow him. Mm, maybe Tormund's man, but who knows? Who knows? Maybe maybe John will slowly get their respect. John's been interacting yeah. with the wildlings a fair bit lately. True. And they did mention that, you know, he has a lot of affections for the wildlings and things like that. And he did say, like, they're just not bad people. They were just born on the other side of the world. It just happened to be that way. Just like John happened to be a bastard. John happened to be a highborn bastard. Yeah. I know Tyrion's on his way to meet Danny, and that will be a really cool interaction. But I honestly think... That Danny and John, they are just such similar people. Yeah. They are similar rulers, similar philosophy. I feel like I could see them leading together. I could see them being in a relationship. I'm very not very someone who really cares about people being in a relationship in a show. Like I don't when it happens, it happens. But I think think that'll be a really good fit. I just think they are such good characters. I wonder if they'll ever meet. I don't know if that'll happen, mm -hmm. but 
I just see them. I'm like, they're two sides of, of, of the same coin, but in different areas, different battles, yeah. you know? I don't know. I, don't I love know John, man. I love John. He's so, he's just, oh, he's so good. Like, yeah. honestly, I think at this point, he is better than Rob. Yeah. I, I love Rob, but. It hurts me saying it, but John has done more. Rob was, Rob did get distracted. He did, he betrayed yeah. the mission. Whereas John, I mean, think about what John's dealing with. Rob was dealing with the wars and then getting distracted with his love and this, that. Whereas John, he's just, he's on the front lines, man, of the real yeah. war. I love them both. I love them both. Uh, no, honestly, I don't love them. Yeah. <laughs> I said love more. John is the know. man at the moment. I can't make that decision right now. It's too, too heavy you of a decision. You can't even decide which house you're in, dude. So no one, no one here is expecting anything <laughs> off of you. Well. Hard you to disloyal. The other interesting thing that happened in that last scene was seeing Stannis' daughter. I don't remember her name, but remember Melisandra said to her mother that she is going to be needed for something important. And I just feel nervous for her. And just seeing her, they reminded me of that. And she was so close to her mother. And I'm like, just stay away from her. Like, she's bad news for you. Yeah. Yeah, she's so blinded by this Lord of Light that she's just, I think, gone all psycho off there. Seeing how vulnerable the Lannisters appear to be in this episode is pretty much lived up to expectation. Mm. It does just really feel that without Tywin, Joffrey, at least as king, whilst pretty useless as a person, yeah, menacing. he was very much, he, he was a vicious ruler. Whereas Tommen is just very like, trusting, naive, impressionable. If somebody sweet talks him, he'll side with that. So Tommen's very, very easily swayed in any colour at the moment. And Cersei's losing control of that anyway. And there just isn't much else going on. So the Lannisters really, not to mention the debt hasn't even come to play yet. And yeah. that's, we know, is, is huge. That was interesting though, seeing the backstory of Cersei. So it's funny because like she knew all this would happen. And was her actions trying to stop that from happening? Like, I just don't know. Yeah, how often do, do kids believe in prophecy? Some weird whiskey yeah. prophecy that doesn't suit what you like. You're like, ah, she's not what she's talking about. That's the common well, story. I don't know. I feel like she believed it. No, nah, I feel like the point of the flashback was that she was reflecting on those events and realizing that they seem to be coming true. Yeah. But I think you choose to believe what you want to. And yeah. really do people just, especially in Cersei's position, just accept, oh, yeah. plus it was very You think riddle. you're going to make your own fate. Yeah. But it was also in riddle. So it's not like she knew exactly what things meant, you know? Yeah. Interesting that they started with the backstory. That was pretty cool to see. Yeah. I just knew by the demeanor. I'm like, yeah, that's that's Cersei. One thing I did love about Stannis, look, I'm going to be honest. I like Stannis, man, but he makes it hard. Like, burning man's because he didn't bend the knee. I get it. He's really yeah. by his customs. But, dude, such a waste. You, you're better off letting him as equal, saying, I'm going to be king of Westeros, but I will fight with you. I get it. That's naive in the Game of Thrones world where anyone good dies, but... Believe it or not, it could have been a more noble way to go about it, and they could have. Wait, so you wanted Stannis to be the king of Westeros, but you fight alongside me? The whole point was Mance wasn't going to do that. That's what bending the knee was. It, like it's not literally yes, bending the knee. Yes, but it's Stannis is very black and white. If he had negotiated, I'm sure there were many ways where he could have found an appropriate cause to fight for. It, it's just that bending the knee was about Mance handing over all his people to Stannis's control and that's not what he wanted so i'm just saying that stannis could have negotiated that much better man's is quite reasonable and he could have come to terms rather than wasting the potential of such a great leader i do think he wasted the potential but i just still think that man's wasn't going to give in to no degree i just think he wasn't going to let his people bleed out for stannis's cause he wasn't gonna let them follow him because at the end of the day you're following Someone that you're meant to believe in, yeah. a king. Well, I guess we don't know, do we? Because Stannis never really asked Mance, what terms do you want and we negotiate? Yeah. So from experience, we'd be here probably three hours if we hash this out right now. But <laughs> my point being that I just think Stannis is very black and white sometimes and wasted that potential in that decision. And I don't love him for that. So Stannis does make it hard for me to love him all the time. But I'm all for him putting the Boltons in their place, especially Ramsay. Yeah. So I really like that when it was said. And if Stannis is going to... And I, I, burning Ramsay by fire would be fantastic. Would make me very happy. And, you know, Bolton, Lord Bolton needs to go to... He betray Rob. He's blacklisted. So if Stannis puts them in their place and Frey too, then I'm on Team Stannis for this part of the battle. Mm, but I do wonder how they'll go about that because Stannis said he 
to do that, he needs a bigger army. So, like, where is he going to get that from? That's why I feel like the wildlings now might fall. Like, I just don't know. Well, I don't think Stannis is an idiot, although he could be. It's a <laughs> fine line. I think he's got an, an idea that he might still be able to win the wildlings over if he gives them the right ultimatum. Yeah. But again, seeing Mance die the way he did, they might choose not, not to go for it. We just don't know. Yeah, who knows? I feel like seeing Tyrion like this, I get he's so defeated. It's just been a shit time for him since Joffrey being on his back. It's just been nothing but bad luck. And although he tried stopping so many things like Shay and whatnot, it just did not end well for him. And then... Obviously, last episode was the accumulation of absolutely everything. Just taking all his anger out on his father. Just killing him. Obviously, killing Shay. And then in a box for God knows how long. I can see why he's so defeated. But it's going to be so good to see him on the way to Marine. To see Danny. Yeah, I can see him getting a lot of purpose again with Danny. The, yeah. His peak was when he was hand. Is when he thrived. He felt he had purpose. Felt purpose, yeah. And I think whether it's a tactical advisor or strategist or whatever for Danny, I think he will find purpose. It's an interesting alliance. I can't wait to see that interaction. That'd it's be funny because cool. you don't think... You forget they're part of the same show. But that, but then you also forget that maybe one day they might interact or you may not even think that they ever will. And yeah. they do. And you're just like, oh my God, like these people that you love are finally going to have these interactions. I know. It's pretty cool to think that Tyrion's going to chat with Danny. I oh, know. The stories have just been so separate. Speaking of Danny, that was a really hard scene to watch. I get it. Like, of course the dragon's going to be angry. Just like little children. They've been locked up. They haven't had their playtime, their freedom. And that's what everyone wants, their freedom, isn't it? I mean, it's funny, right? Because Danny is fighting for freedom. And although she's getting that for humans, not so much for her own children. So she's like in this predicament, isn't she? Well, I think, isn't it, you can only connect with one dragon at a time, but the others, because what we were told earlier, I believe, was that the other two followed the black dragon, which was the one that she connected with. So I'm thinking that- Like when, bonded with. Yeah. So when that, what was it called again? Bonding. No, the black dragon. Oh, Drogon. So when Drogon comes back, eventually, hopefully, and she bonds with Drogon and particularly- if she has fear, Drogon can sense that. She has to be confident to for Drogon to submit and serve. Yeah. And then I believe through that avenue, she can rein in the other two. But she, I think Drogon's the missing piece and her confidence is the missing piece. They yeah. sense her fear. They sense that she, they can overrule her, you know? Yeah. But I don't know if you noticed. So the names of the dragons are Viserion, which is Viser after name after Viserys. Rhaegul. Which is her uh, older brother, Rhaegar. Yeah. And then Drogo, Drogon. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. no, I actually never made that pick up. Yeah, that's cool. That's How nice cool. is that? I it's, mean, it's I don't know why. She... Yeah, I don't know why you'd call it Viserion. Like... No, not that. But it's interesting how she really loved Drogo. Yeah. Like, at the beginning, it was sort of an abusive, or organized marriage. But in the end, she truly came to appreciate him. Yeah. It's interesting. Like, that was... Well, they grew together. She taught him his ways and he, her, and... Yeah. They really grew to actually love each other. That's the another, way I saw another it. Another great character, dude. So many great characters. I know. All the leader, all the guys I love die, pretty much. Yeah, same. Drogo, Mance, Ned. Like, whoa, why are you going to do this, man? But, but it's so crazy that everyone loves these characters. People that were there for a season or less. and That's how memorable they were, yeah. 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 So, testament to the story writing. I mean, we didn't see much of it, but it was interesting to see Marjorie's interactions with Loras and also Tommen. So it is actually interesting. She does want Loras to marry Cersei, only to take Cersei out of the picture, but... She's not too afraid either way, though, it seems. Yeah, well, because she seems like she's got a plan to take Cersei out if that doesn't happen. So I yeah. wonder what that means for the... Honestly, the Lannisters are, like... In just crumbling. And it's interesting how Cersei's just watching that almost helpless. Well, I was expecting her to confront Marjorie straight away, but she sort of went away. Yeah. We sort of already knew, but we got confirmation that Lancel, under Cersei's instruction, was told to give yeah. Robert heavy wine or, you know, just harsher wine, wine than usual, yeah. which is what led to death and that Cersei had sort of been always trying to somehow sabotage Robert anyway. Yeah. So it's a shame, although he was probably not the best king, but Ned would have still been alive if Robert was alive, which means Robert would have still been alive, which means... <laughs> I know. Probably it, be it's no so story, weird but... seeing Lancel like that. Yeah. 
Um, well, he's like cooler and more buffed up, but then he's just like really like almost like a monk, you know, whereas I was expecting him to be like a warrior. Is he a different actor? actor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, well, I think so. Actually, good point. Because it's been, it has been years. Correct, season, correct. Good so. point. I wonder if he just grew up and buffed up. Damn, if he did, he chased a lot. I don't know. <laughs> could put on the guy, the, the actor, if, if it's the same guy. But yeah, so Marjorie does have something in the pipeline for Cersei, but I do want Jamie to come out on top. Like, I don't want him to crumble like it, like Cersei, you know? Yeah, so, Jamie's arc's interesting. He's sort of always miss- been in the, in his grey area of pain, trying yeah. to do the right thing, and then pain. And I miss his outspokenness when he was out on the road and captured, you know. That was whereas, really nice. Yeah, whereas now he's just silenced by Cersei. Like, how dare she blame Tywin's death on him? And I do get why she's saying it, but... Come on, the man caused all of you pain. Well, like in a in a sense, she started it by trying to have Tyrion killed. Yeah, true. Otherwise, there would have been none of this bullshit would happen. So you know, you play with fire, you get burnt. Yep, you play with fire, you get burnt. Like just like in the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. She's about to die. <laughs> Guys, hope you enjoyed our reaction to episode one. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, hit that subscribe button. Let us know in the comments your thoughts. Take care of yourselves and we'll see you guys back for episode two. See you guys.